species known as Daxi in a Buddhist You see, I don't believe in buying furniture from a house. Your home with bleed and the demand to the joy jar, a simple yet powerful. Hello everyone. Today I'm making a chili cheese curry that is known as Emma Dati in Bhutanese term. This curry has become my ultimate stress reliever, my go-to dish that I find solace in, especially during my college days. I have fond memories of cooking this recipe secretly in my college dorm and calling over my good friend Medika to enjoy it with me. She loved this recipe so much that she once requested me to make a video of it. So here's the recipe. I cut the chilies in four sections and chop the garlic. You can also add onions and tomatoes if you like, but I'm keeping it simple for this recipe. So it's not even been one month that I've been using this electric stove and there's already some water stains, spill stains, that I can't remove at all. This stain is so difficult to remove. Today I'm making it in my favorite style and it won't be a gravy. I heat up enough oil and salt in the pan. It's important not to burn the chilies, so I let them cook for a while before adding the cheese. I'm using Britannia cheese, but you can also use local cheese known as Daxi in a Bhutanese You can prepare this curry in various styles using different varieties of chilies. Some people use dried big red chilies, some green chilies, and small green chilies. I like having this Emma that's so dry. making brunch for myself and this is how it looks like with just a few simple ingredients and steps this curry is a flavorful and comforting dish that never fails to lift my spirit so now i'll be eating it I've chosen to take a different path when it comes to furnishing my home. You see, I don't believe in buying furniture from a house. For starters, I have found that living with fewer pieces of furniture creates a sense of openness and freedom in my space. Without bulky sofas, coffee tables, and chairs cluttering up the space, I'm able to move around more freely and enjoy the simplicity of my surroundings. 
plus there's something inherently calming about having empty floor space. It allows me to focus on what really matters, experiences, relationships, and personal growth. Instead of traditional furniture, I opted for versatile alternatives like floor cushions and low table. These simple pieces not only provide comfort but also add a touch of warmth and coziness to my home. I don't believe that I need to save my hard-earned money every month or take out a loan only to buy furniture for the house. So while some may see my choice as unconventional, for me it's a conscious decision to live more intentionally and to invest my money on things that truly matter. Having less furniture makes it so much easier for me to keep clean. After a thorough cleaning session, there's one final step to elevate the atmosphere, that is burning incense sticks. Burning incense sticks not only fills your home with pleasant aromas but also clears away any lingering odors, leaving your space feeling fresh and inviting. Perfect for unwinding after a busy day. I used to be a voracious reader when I was younger. Books were my escape, my source of knowledge, and my companions through many adventures. But then life happened. College exams, assignments, and the demands of starting a career took over. Reading became a luxury I couldn't afford. I found myself constantly buying books, downloading PDFs, but never finding the time to read them. And when I did, it was only for a few pages before life pulled me away again. But in 2024, I decided to make a change. I added reading 100 books to my vision board. Because I realized that reading isn't just a hobby, it's essential for my mental well-being. It's an opportunity for continuous learning and my personal growth. I started with what I wish I knew when I was 20. I discovered that self-help books and non-fiction strongly resonate with me. They keep me engaged and eager to learn. Some days I have the luxury of reading for hours on end. Other days it's just 30 minutes squeezed in between talks. But no matter how busy life gets, I make time for what's important to me. And through it all, I've rediscovered the joy of reading. The magic of getting lost in a story. The wisdom found in the pages of a book. And the comfort of knowing that no matter where life takes me, I will always have my books. In the last vlog, I told you, I have shared with you that I'm going to do something with this jar. So today I'm going to show you what exactly I'm going to do with this jar. Have you ever heard the saying, start the year with an empty jar? Well, I stumbled upon this idea while scrolling through Instagram one day. And it really resonated with me. The concept is simple yet powerful. You start the air with an empty jar and each week you add a note with something good that happened. 
Then on New Year's Eve, you empty the jar and reflect on all the amazing moments you have collected throughout the year. But I wanted to take it a step further. Instead of just once a week, I decided to add notes frequently. Anytime something good happens, big or small. It could be a kind gesture from a stranger, a heartwarming moment with loved ones, or a personal achievement that I'm proud of. Each note represents a memory, a moment of gratitude for the blessings in my life. By filling this joy jar, I'm creating a treasure trove of memories, a collection of all the good things that have happened throughout the year. And when the New Year's Eve rolls around, I will have the privilege of taking a stroll down memory lane and relieving those moments of joy and gratitude. Cheers to the joy jar, a simple yet powerful reminder of the beauty and goodness that surround us every day.